So this is CNC router parts auto Z and corner finding touch plate. It's kind of an interesting little tool. It's a machine from billet aluminum and has two plates that are spring loaded, one on this side and one on this side. And then this version has a little magnet that attaches to the spindle. And so this red wire is, uh, has continuity with the ground signal of the controller and then the touch plate actually has continuity with the signal. Uh, wire and so it essentially works like a proximity sensor when the spindle touches the plate it pulls the input pin to ground and thus that's the signal um, and so when it's has this uh, awkward side up then it's just gonna act as a pure Z touch plate and then when you're using it this face down it's essentially a uh, corner finding tool and so the, the idea here is to set the work coordinates of your machine precisely. The center of your bit will be on this corner. And essentially it just slides under the corner. Obviously the work piece, work piece would be fixed. Um, and then the router comes down and touches off on both of these sides. But does the Z, X axis, and then Y axis. And it does it in the, the opposite direction you would kind of expect, even though it's trying to find this edge, it moves that way, because if you move this way, you would potentially just push the, push the touch plate off the workpiece. So anyway, um, basically CNC router parts lovingly put out a, a script for Mach 3 in Visual Basic uh, to use this, and there wasn't one for Mach 4, and so I went ahead and implemented one uh, for Mach 4 and got it to work. And so I'll be demonstrating that. All right, so before we get started with the demo, uh, the most important thing before you get started is to ensure that you've connected the touch plate to your controller and configured it within Mach 4. Whatever input you happen to put it on is that that is configured within Mach 4 to be the probe. The probe is the signal that is going to be looked at uh, to stop the motion. And so when we, the actual the software is using a, a G code of G31, which is a probing motion, and it's uh, sort of pre-wired to, to look at that probe signal, that signal and no other signals. And so you've got to have that set up as the probe, and you have to ensure that, that it's working before you get going. And uh, I'll show you that uh, in the software. All right, so in Mach 4, we need to go to Configure, Control, and then we're going to go to Input Signals tab. And so I know already that I've connected my uh, touch plate to input number 6 on the PMDX424, which here is referred to as Smart Bob USB. And so if we scroll down all the way and we're looking for an input called probe, and here it is, a probe. So it's really critical that you set this up uh, to be the touch plate. And so I've set it up as smart bob input number six, and I've set active low because we're going to pull that input signal to ground when the two things come together. And so I've enabled the mapping and I, it's active low, and then I've added a label. And it's it's super critical that you do this, or the the probing move will just not stop. So that's going to be bad. So now we know that the input signal from the touch plate is mapped to the probe. So now the second part is we have to verify that the signal is actually making it through. We go up here to this machine diagnostics tab. And here it'll show you, it gives you a nice panel of all the status of the input and outputs. I'm also going to pull up this other one that I'm using because I use this PMDX uh, 424. And this is from the PMDX side. And so essentially what we hope to be seeing is that this probe uh, activates. And since my in probe is actually put on input 6, when I touch the magnet to the touch plate, I'm expecting input 6 and probe to activate. So let's go see if that can happen. Right. 
the only other prerequisites are that you put the touch plate on the corner of your workpiece and that you roughly jog the spindle to be above the touch plate. And then you're going to have to jog, like in this case it's too far above, I'll have to move the z-axis to within, within about two inches of the touch plate. And that's because there's a configuration property within the software that sets the maximum distance will travel in any uh, access to uh, to reach the touch plate. So if it's more than two inches, it'll just stop and give up. All right. So here in Mach 4, I decided to install the <clears throat> the UI in this uh, tab to the right of the jogging. And uh, I'm going to have a separate video on how to download and install this software anywhere you want it. Um, but for now, uh, I'll just focus on, on how to use the interface. And so all of these UI elements are basically stolen from the CNC router parts version of this software that they wrote for Mach 3. And I figured they knew what they were doing, so I just copied it here. Uh, the only difference is they had two buttons, an OK and a Cancel, and I replaced it with just one Run button. And so um, in my version, if you disable uh, your Mach 4 and try to run, you'll get this pop-up and it'll say uh, the machine must be enabled to zero the axes. And then under the hood, there's also another check that ensures that the, the machine is in the idle state, meaning that there isn't any other G code that's pending or running. I don't know what would cause the Mach 4 to be in that state. I just wanted to make sure that nothing else was running. Um, so that protection is there. So if we do enable it, um, if you leave the tool diameter zero and press run, you'll get a prompt saying the tool diameter must be greater than zero. Uh, if you have a negative number, it'll do the same thing. Um, and then if you have a, just garbage characters, it'll complain that you have to enter a valid number. And then uh, if you actually enter a number that's larger than the width of the actual touch plate itself, it'll complain that the tool diameter can't be greater than the touch plate. So that's there too. Our bit uh, that we're gonna use today is a two fluted half inch bit. So we'll enter 0.5. And uh, here we have uh, the axes which you're choosing to zero and so you can do just the z-axis you cannot unclick the z-axis so you always have to zero that one and then you optionally can do x or y or all three so we're going to do all three today and then here we have the orientation which is which corner of the workpiece have you put the touch plate on and the default is the left front but you have the other four options there. And then it'll also work in inches and millimeters. My machine's set to inches, so I'll do that. And then we have a checkbox to ask it, please pause between the axes so I can rotate the flutes of the bit. And so we'll select that. All right, and so that's it. Uh, we should also note, you know, our machine coordinates and our work coordinates right now are the same. And then afterwards, it's going to zero these work coordinates to be that front left corner. And so we'll see that. So here we go. Press run. Yay. All right. And so I'm going to rotate the flutes so that we can do the x-axis. and rotating the flutes for the uh, tension there and the, do the y-axis. All right, and so it backs off and then uh, gives you a dialog that says the zeroing sequence is complete. And then once we accept that, you'll notice that the uh, work coordinates have now been updated. So now uh, if I 
go out there and ask the machine to go to X, Y, Z of zero, I'll uh, hopefully bring this bit to the uh, corner here. And that's at least what we're expecting. Right, so here we are. We're going to go to X0, Y0, Z0. And we are... Yeah. That brings us... So that's pretty much it for this demo. So I put this code up in GitHub, and as I said before, the next video I make will be about how to download that code and uh, install it in any panel you want within your uh, UI. Uh, you know, I'm also looking for some feedback. If any of you are Mach 4 coding wizards and wouldn't mind taking a look, I am totally would love some feedback. Um, I think this syntax is pretty straightforward, but things about code organization and best practices in Mach 4 are definitely unknown to me. And, uh, you know, maybe I'm missing, you know, some st important strategic elements. Like, you know, maybe I should have a few more guards or maybe the guards that I used are, you know, are senseless or something. So things like that. Um, but yeah, I'll talk about that more in the next video. Thanks for watching.